Just a moment to set speech. that up. Right. <clears throat> And I did get an email from Representative King. He will show up a little bit late. He has a, another meeting he's attending. Okay. And you are all set to go. As chairman of the House Health, Human Services, and Elderly Affairs Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. This is a committee orientation meeting. Please note that there is no physical location for the members of the public to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that, one, all members of the committee and select legislative staff have the ability to com communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through the Zoom electronic meeting platform, and that the public has access to listen contemporaneously, and if necessary, participate in this meeting by the Zoom platform or by telephone. All necessary access information has been made available in the House calendar and through the electronic calendar on the General Court website. The notice for this meeting complies with House rules and RSA 91-A. Anyone who has a problem accessing the meeting should call 271-3600 or email hcs at leg.state.nh.us. The phone number again is 271-3600. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, that means everyone in the public, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Christina Dyer, committee researcher, will be the staff member assisting us. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states his or her presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting. This is required under the right to know law. So do I call the roll or whom, who calls the roll? Uh, you can today. Do you have a clerk identified? I have a clerk. And does the clerk have the list of names handy? Then I will do my clerk emeritus duty yes. before turning it over to our new clerk. <laughs> William Marsh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will point out that you were supposed to say where you were and whether you were alone first, but uh, I'm currently in my home office in Brookfield and I am currently alone. Charles McMahon. Good morning, all. I'm in my home office in Winham, and I am alone. Bill Nelson. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I am in my home in Brookfield, New Hampshire, and I am alone. Dennis Acton. Dennis Acton. Betty Gay. Um, I'm at home alone, but my husband could walk in the kitchen any old time in Salem. Leah Cushman. Good morning. I am home in where um, I am alone in the room currently, but my kids or my husband may come through. <laughs> Beth Folsom. Hi, I am Beth Folsom. I am in Wentworth and in my home. Um, and my husband is in the house and could walk through at any time. Nikki Kelsey. Hi, I'm Nikki Kelsey. I'm home in Bedford. I'm currently in my home office with my two dogs, um, but my husband could also walk through as well. Bill King. Bill King. Jim Kofalt. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am in my home office in Wilton, New Hampshire, 
uh, I am alone here and there may be someone walking through occasionally. Lucy Weber. Uh, here, uh, I'm currently in Concord, not Walpole, and uh, I am alone because the dog has gone to day. Jim McKay. Jim McKay. Kendall Snow. You're muted, Ken. Lower left corner. Ken. You got it now. Got it now. Hello, am I on? Yeah. You were You're muted again. You were. You're muted again, Ken. Ken, you need to unmute yourself. You can also press the, oh, there you go. There we go. Did I go? Okay, Ken Snow, I'm in my home and my wife is in the vicinity. Where is your home? Manchester. Jerry Knurk. Yes, hi, Jerry Knurk here. I am home alone in freedom in my study and my wife just went to work, so I'm alone alone. Jeffrey Soloway. Uh, good morning. Uh, I am at home in Lee, New Hampshire, uh, alone, but with the dog. Jerry Cannon. Hi, Jerry Cannon. I'm in Somersworth, New Hampshire. Um, I'm home alone in Somersworth. Actually, I have a couple of dogs that might try and get in my lap. Francis Nutta Upham. Hello, I'm, I'm here. I'm in Nashua. Everyone else in the house is still sleeping, so I'm alone. Joe Shapiro. I am in my home office in Keene um, by myself. Gary Woods. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. I'm in Bo in my study uh, at my home, and uh, I'm home alone. Gary Merchant. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I'm in Claremont, New Hampshire, in my home, and I am alone. And this is Mark Pearson. I'm in my study in Hampstead, and I'm alone, and unfortunately, I'm dogless. <laughs> and that completes the roll call. So, Christina, what do you have for us? Well, I just wanted to introduce myself uh, to folks on the committee. Um, I'll be your researcher. Uh, I know Representative Pearson asked, asked me to give a little overview of what it is that, that I do. Um, I believe House Committee Services will be giving a more formal presentation about everything that they do at a later date. Um, but um, my main tasks, um, I can actually put something up for you to take a quick look. Um, so this is sort of an overview of what committee research services does. Um, so any research requests that you might have about uh, bills that do come in, um, you can certainly um, ask for, but they must be coordinated through the chair and vice chair. Um, so this could include any historical comparative data, um, research, like any subject matter legislative history, um, several comparisons um, side by sides uh, for Senate bills, um, and then some tracking. Um, you know, I work hard to make sure that there's some sort of smooth workflow and I try to attend all meetings and subcommittee work sessions to make sure everything flows smoothly. Um, as, you'll, as you'll note, um, you'll be completing minority and majority reports. I will also be proofing and editing those to make sure that those are um, look good when they come out in the calendar um, during your, your sessions. Um, and, you know, I also serve as a guide for um, procedure if you have questions on that as well. Um, my email is, I think you all have it now, I emailed you multiple times. Um, 
but that's uh, in a nutshell uh, what I'm doing. It's also important that I like to note that I am that our office is uh, nonpartisan. So all of the information that comes in is for both parties um, and comes in and is an attempt to be a brief overview of the materials that can help you um, in your analysis of the bills. Um, and if there's any questions, please let me know. Would you explain just in case any of the new members uh, don't know what a side-by-side -side is and how helpful it is? Absolutely. Um, so a side-by-side -side <laughs> might be, for example, um, a previous bill, there are certain versions, an amendment that might have come through. Um, it would be quite literally um, a side-by-side -side of each of those amendments next to each other and any of the changes that might have happened um, it through the text, I would highlight those changes and uh, the certain, um, the outcome of those particular changes. Uh, that can also be used um, when we go to committee of conference in Senate uh, for Senate bills. Uh, so you can take a look at what the Senate version looks like and what the House version looks like. And that should help you um, kind of parse through the data to figure out what the differences are. We will be getting some uh redos or refilings of bills that we've seen before, partially because they didn't pass last time and the sponsor wants to try it again, sometimes because the bills got to the Senate and they didn't get attached to anything, so they died on the table and we're back again. In some cases, the bills will be the same as we saw last time or the time before. But I know with a couple of my bills, I took the occasion to make some slight changes. Would it be possible for us to request side-by-sides with one side being last time and the other side being this time? You could certainly do that. Um, I do like to note that I am staffing five committees at the moment. Um, so um, certainly happy to help as much as possible. I do also have all the bill files from last session. So if you're looking at bills that have already gone through a public hearing that died on the table because of our session last, um, uh, last spring, I can also take all of that testimony and oh, you could take a look at the bill file as it exists um, from last time. So we wanna be kind to you and do it only when we really think it's necessary and not just because we like to generate work. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Um, what now uh, of the secretary that used to be in the committee office and the various things she did? I know when I was clerk, there were numbers of things where she and I would uh, have to meet. And I recall that the various chairs did similar. Uh, since we're not there and I'm not sure, and, and I read that the offices, committee offices are not open, uh, what of? Uh, do some of the things we used to do with her now go to you or what? So uh, your committee assistant this year is going to be, uh, take a look, is going to be Lindsay Forcier. Uh, and so, you know, she would be working on electronic amendments and there we're working on getting an electronic bill filed together. Um, and then so any, um, any IT issues that you might be having, any, um, well, typically copying, you know, that sort of thing, um, providing up those paper copies, that again is being worked out. As of right now, uh, the fourth floor is completely closed. Um, so uh, there, will be, there won't be any contact. If there's something that you need uh, from, from us or from the clerical staff, then you can call 271-3600 and make your request there. Uh, for those of you who may actually go in purpose of, uh, in person, excuse me, if there's something that you need, um, we, we request that you give us some notice and you call up to the, the fourth floor at 3600 uh, to let them know that you need something um, and then we'll filter it down that way. Will we go up to get it or will it be there on the table in the double wide committee room? It would be downstairs on the table. So okay. the goal is to, to limit exposure um, and anything that's requested would be in the committee room available to you. It sounds to me that those of us who may not have an immediate printer availability should look into that. I have one at my office office, but I don't have a working one at my home office, but I just put that on my to-do list. Because if we ask for something, you might send us a link and we'd have to print it out. Representative Knurk. 
Yeah, just a real quick question. That two two seven one thirty six hundred, because I know a lot of phones are not being answered as people are not working there. Is that one that people actually answer during the day? Yes, there's someone there okay. in the office monitoring every day. And then also, what is? could you tell us your telephone number that we, where we can actually reach you? Are you on site and we can reach you there? I'm not on site, but the, um, the number is forwarded to my home. So okay. my, my line is 271-3385. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and in terms of Lindsay uh, Forcier, she was our assistant last time. And yes. we will find out her phone number and specifically what she's going to do when that's been worked out. Correct. We're okay. in the process of right, that right now. Representative so she, has no phone, she has no phone number at this point. Lindsay. Correct. Not yet. Hands, please. Representative Weber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I am assuming that we also have the um, admonition that we have had in the past that uh, those who need Ms. Dyer, except for things like I can't get onto the phone, I can't get onto the phone call. Uh, need to go through you when it's when it's substantive work so that she so that uh, the committee needs are prioritized and so that she isn't having to answer phone calls from 26 times 20, 22 times five people is that correct yeah. yeah most things should go through me as last time they went through you yeah any other questions of, uh, yes, Representative Folsom. Thank you. Um, can you please repeat Lindsay's last name for me? Yes, uh, Forcier, F-O-R-C-I-E-R. Thank you. You're welcome. Her grandfather would have pronounced it Forcier. Most likely. <laughs> Anyone else questions of Christina? Then I would like to start at least. Um, Representative um, Marsh and I have to leave at about 9.50 for a chair and vice chair meeting. But at least in the half an hour we have left, I think we can begin introduction and tell us when I call on you, tell us your name, the town or towns you represent, uh, why you wanted to be on this committee, uh, what your work, your other job, your day job is or was, a few interesting little facts about yourself. Don't go more than about three minutes, but we can learn a lot in three minutes. The only new person from the Democrat side to our committee is Gary Merchant. And we're so glad you're with us. You spent mm -hmm. a lot of time with us anyway, as <laughs> um, the only pharmacist in the house. And uh, some of us uh, put in a strong request for you, should there have been a vacancy and there was. So Gary, tell us what I haven't told them about you. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Chair, for that introduction. Um, my name is Gary Merchant. I'm a second term representative from Claremont. I represent Ward 2 in the city, I'm now retired. Prior to my retirement, I worked as a pharmacist um, in several different arenas. Uh, the last one was at Mary Hitchcock Memorial Hospital, known as Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center. Uh, I was responsible for the collaborative, which was a group of 17 hospitals working with the medical center in realm of trying to coordinate pharmacy activities. The reason why I want to be on the committee is that I think it fits very well with my expertise. And after Chairman Pearson made a comment, I was before you committee quite many, several times last year. And I learned to respect a lot of the intellect, the work that you folks are working on, and also the bills that were before you. And my expertise and my background in pharmacy would lend itself to the committee and become an asset to it. I've lived in Claremont all my life. Um, I've been a resident here for many years, obviously. Um, I reside here now with my wife. Um, I have three daughters, um, they, five grandchildren, so I've been blessed. Um, but that's kind of who I am, and I look forward to working with everyone on this group and this committee. Thank you so much. Let's uh, call upon the rookie uh, Republicans, start <laughs> with uh, Bill King, or not, Nikki mm. Kelsey. 
Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Nikki Kelsey. I live in Bedford. I am a stay-at-home mom. I have a 14-year-old daughter. Um, some interesting facts about me. I was a flight attendant for many years, and then I retired doing that, and I opened a registered daycare center, which I owned and operated. And I just want to be on health and human services because it's where my heart is. It's where my passion is. And um, I'm really looking forward to working with each and every one of you, and most importantly, learning from all of you with your expertise in the field. So thank you so much. Representative Kelsey, are you a lifelong Bedford native, or did you come here from somewhere else? No, so I've lived all over the country. Um, I'm originally from Kansas City. I've lived all the way from California to New York, down to Florida, and then back up here. <laughs> so I've been all over the wonderful United States. <laughs> Thank you. Representative Acton has joined the meeting. I'll call on you for a bio later, but you need to let us know where you are and if you're alone. Yeah. Right, thank you. I'm uh, having a little bit of hardware difficulty. I am in my kitchen. I am all alone. Uh, how is my audio sound? Hey. Not too good. A little weak. Okay, I'll work on that. Name. And home is what town? Uh, Fremont. Uh, I'm down in Fremont. Okay, thank you very much. We'll get back to you. Uh, Beth Folsom, your intro. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. That, um, my name is Beth Folsom. I live in Wentworth and I represent Wentworth, Dorchester and Canaan. Um, I have kind of a unique reason why I wanted to be on Health and Human Services and Elderly Affairs, partly because my degree is in social work with an emphasis on gerontology. Mm. And I um, also used to live in Colorado, and I was an aide for nine years to a state senator who chaired Health and Human Services. Um, so um, I did it during the whole period when marijuana came on board. So marijuana bills and I are very familiar. Um, and uh, so this is just an area that has always interested me and I felt like I wouldn't have as much time needed to play catch up. Thank you so much. And you are, are you native to Colorado? Uh, no, I'm native to um, Connecticut. Uh, then I went to college and met my husband in Minnesota and we, he is a Colorado native, so that's how we ended up there. But we also spent three years living in Alaska. Oh, wow. Left Alaska. Boy. Uh, did somebody just sign in who hasn't been on think, earlier? Mr. Chair, I think someone signed out. Oh, so, signed out? Okay. Uh, let's see. Where am I? Beth Folsom. Leah Cushman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Leah Cushman. I live in Ware and I represent Hillsborough County District 2, um, which is Ware and Deering. This is my first term. I'm a registered nurse. I've been in nursing for six, six years. Um, I wanted to be on this committee because it's most relevant to my profession and body of knowledge. Health is a passion of mine. Uh, I'm married. My husband is a stay-at-home dad and homeschooler to our three boys. Um, we have uh, a dog, a cat, two goats, and 10 chickens out here. And um, I'm a native to Massachusetts, but I moved to New Hampshire in 2017. And I spent probably half my childhood in New Hampshire um, at a campground in Raymond. Where in New Hampshire, uh, where in Massachusetts? Um, I grew up in Reading. Okay. It's like 15 minutes north of Boston. Right, right, thank you. Uh, Betty Gay. Yes. Um, I'm happily moved from election law to health and human services. Uh, both are my passion and I've been fascinated by medicine ever since I was nine and started reading the medicine column in Time Magazine. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy that, you know, that I got assigned here. Um, it is, you know, great interest to me. I live in Salem. I was born in Galveston, grew up in Texas, attended Lamar, which is a university now with a degree in chemistry. And that's the only degree I have. Thank you. Oh, uh, oh, 
Did you know at 10 o'clock from 10 to 11, there is a Zoom presentation uh, against drug abuse. And the third presenters are the students from the high school. I can't remember, I always say they're from Dover and they're not. Um, it's the organization that you hear PSAs from, from teenagers. Uh, it's a, a joint effort sponsored by the police in town, but, but they've been doing PSAs on the radio for years. And Public service not... announcements. Where, do, where would one find the link to get onto that meeting? Well, I'll, I, what I can do is find it and tell me who to forward it to and who would have the whole list to tell everybody. Well, for the moment, it would be probably a past email that came to all of us from Christina. That would possibly be the most accurate. Or okay. you could hit that one-stop shopping, H-H-S-E-A -E -A. at, yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Sounds like a railroad, you know? Okay, thank you. Dennis Acton, please, a little bio of yourself. <clears throat> Okay, uh, sorry about the connection issues. I'm trying to get an old laptop fired up for, for um, remote use. But um, anyway, back onto my, my iPhone, which always works with Zoom. Um, yeah, so uh, once again, my name is Dennis Acton. I'm, I'm actually, this is my second term and my second time on the Health and Human Services and um, Elderly Affairs Committee. Um, I, I loved it last time. It was something that was, I think, really special to all of us, despite the trouble we ran into. And I'm, I'm very much glad to be back. Uh, real briefly, my background is um, I'm a nine-year military veteran. Um, I have a, uh, hang on a second. I have a, uh, I have, I have a uh, communications degree, uh, bachelor's of science from Southern Connecticut State University. And uh, I wound up moving up to New Hampshire in 1994, where I was a, uh, um, worked in high tech and I was I was in a variety of high-tech startups, um, a lot of them medical related. So that's why I started gaining medical knowledge. And then I, I was an IT director for a busy medical firm for many years, uh, which gave me the, the knowledge of insurance billing and, and the, how the systems work in the background, working with New Hampshire Medicaid and, and uh, federal Medicare and, and so forth. So I have a lot of background in that, which gives me a good basis to move forward. But in general, my, my, the reason for being here is to uh, represent the, the um, working parents. It, uh, that's something that, that um, got me elected here in my town. Um, I won by almost two thirds vote and got outspent 30 to one. Um, but I, I focus on representing working parents and also um, the, the low level medical providers, healthcare people. My wife is a, a home care physical therapist. She's in the, been in the thick of COVID from, from the get-go. And uh, so I have a unique perspective of in an ear to the ground of what's going on out there at the patient level, at the, at the family level. And that gives me a unique perspective coming into health and human services too. Thank you, Representative um, Acton. We're right. gonna be moving on. Uh, Representative uh, Bill Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Bill Nelson and I'm a retired school teacher and school administrator. And in my fifth term, I represent Brookfield, Wakefield, Ossipee, and Effingham. Um, I'm very pleased to see the broad spectrum of members of this committee. I grew up in New Jersey. From there, I moved to Vermont, and I've been in New Hampshire for about 25 years. My interest has been working with the elderly and homebound through a church-related ministry, and my wife, who's very, uh, very big into working with uh, people that are in nursing homes, et cetera. That's it. Representative Nelson, when you were a school teacher, what population did you teach? I taught everything, but the primary thing was special ed. As a teacher, an administrator was both a principal and a special ed director. Yep. Special ed would relate to part of what we do. <laughs> Re Representative McMahon. <clears throat> Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Charlie McMahon. I'm out of the uh, town of Windham and I'm in starting my 10th term on the committee, which is a distinct honor uh, and a environment of learning how you can truly help the greatest amount of New Hampshire citizens in one location. Uh, what I've learned from my colleagues uh, that are on the board 
even now, is how to be an aggressive advocate with manners. And that's something uh, that I've learned that we need to do here to get things done while we're young, which means do it today. So I'm hoping to work uh, closely together with everyone and uh, I'm, I'm anxious for the year to get started. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And you are our coordinator of appropriate expediting with the great phrase, let's do it while we're young. Uh, what is the other phrase we know you for? <laughs> what are old people really? Uh, you're aggressively mature. Thank you. <laughs> of course, that's debatable. So, but that's that's for another another session. <laughs> Representative Marsh, I've lost my thank, coach here. Thank you, oh, Mr. There he Mr. Is. Chairman. There he uh, is. He's, okay. I I had to unmute myself here. Uh, and uh, thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, this is my third term in the House, uh, representing the southern half of Carroll County in the Flutorial District. Uh, and uh, it is my third term on Health and Human Services, which I very much enjoyed and wanted to come back again. Uh, as far as history, I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, uh, moved to New Hampshire uh, as a Dartmouth student in 1975 and ended up staying. Uh, I uh, practiced ophthalmology as a uh, solo practitioner and a sole proprietor for approximately 30 years before I retired. I've also served as trustee of Huggins Hospital since 2004, including two terms as the corporate treasurer. Uh, I've served as the moderator of the town of Brookfield since 2010. I've served as the health officer of the town of Brookfield since 2002. Um, and uh, this is our first year that uh, we're no longer homeschooling, Leah. So we have that in common. We, uh, my, my last of my five children is now off to Connecticut College and uh, we no longer have that responsibility. We, we've sim similarly cut back on the number of animals. We now have four chickens left and no longer have sheep and alpacas. So we, we have that in common as well. So it's a pleasure working with you all and I'm sure we'll have a nice, nice year working together. Thank you so much. Representative Woods. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm Gary Woods. I'm originally from California. Um, grew up there, actually. My high school is American Graffiti, wow. <laughs> the movie. Uh, George Lucas was a uh, high school classmate. Uh, <laughs> I went to Berkeley, went to Berkeley in physics, and then Hopkins in biophysics. Uh, got lost in the East Coast, went to Rochester for medical school, became, stayed on the faculty as a orthopedic hand surgeon uh, for five years, uh, uh, then came here in 82, retired a few years ago. Along the way, I was involved with the legislature with a variety of commissions, perhaps 10 or 12 commissions over the years, mm -hmm. uh, variety of uh, policy positions, mm -hmm. both state and nationally, and AMA and the Hand Society and the, uh, and the State Medical Society. So both my uh, technical background, uh, as well as my policy with uh, a variety of positions that have served me well. Um, and obviously I have a, a, a committed interest uh, to the topic in health and human services. It's important to know that he was a hand surgeon. I found that out when he took my hand, I realized immediately he wasn't being fresh. He was checking out my Dupatrain, right? Dupatron, Dupitron. Dupitron. <laughs> French. Okay. So in case he comes and takes your hand, don't be surprised. He is uh, being very professional. Representative Shapiro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am a transplant from New York. I have lived in Keene for over 30 years. And um, I represent um, one of the um, at large seats for the city of Keene. Um, by profession, I've had a career as a clinical social worker from which I retired about a year ago. I worked with in numerous venues, schools, community mental health, private practice over the years. So I have a strong interest in mental health. Um, I have two adult daughters and what else? Um, dogs. Dogs. <laughs> I have a very strong interest in um, competitive croquet. Oh, that's wow. it, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, really? you're on. So sometimes that will be a competing, um, a competing interest and um, scheduling issue. I was threatened with expulsion from Oxford 
because I played croquet American style and not British style. And they, a certain person of power did not like that well, but he had mercy on me. So I stayed. So maybe I'll we take, can have I'll, a committee tournament. I'll take you on. Yeah. All <laughs> right. Uh, Representative Nutterupham. All right. I'm on. Uh, hi, Fran Nutterupham. I represent Ward 6 in Nashua. Uh, I moved to New Hampshire when I was 14 with my parents to Merrimack, where I graduated from Merrimack High. Um, I lived in New York, New Jersey, Switzerland, Ireland, Maryland, I don't remember. I was actually born in Illinois, but they moved quickly. As an adult, I've lived in um, England, Holland, and several summers in Poland, you know, teaching in English language programs with my wow. four children. Um, I'm a art psychotherapist. I went to, I was a stay at home mom, you know, pretty much in my early forties, I went to graduate school. So I've been an art psychotherapist for 22 years. Last year I was retired. This year I took a job with the Courier Museum of Art mm, mm. as an art therapist working with veterans and their families. Oh. Um, an initiative mm. that's just getting started and it's gonna be great. Wow. Um, I I've got, as I said, the four kids, four chickens, uh, one cat, two grandsons, one of whom has been diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, no. a little fella who's 10. Oh. So, you know, last year we heard uh, rare disease uh, registries and, you know, so now all that stuff is kind of hitting home. He, he's doing great for now. We're hoping for gene therapy. So, oh. you know, anyway, Thank I'm you. excited for everyone's expertise on this committee and well. the best committee. Well, I'm not. No, I'm not. Representative Cannon. Hi, um, uh, Jerry Cannon. I currently um, am representative for Stratford 18, which is uh, for the five wards in Summersworth and Ra the small town of Rollinsford. Um, I've, I, I grew up in Sudbury, Massachusetts, yeah. and um, moved up to New Hampshire 43 years ago. So I've spent more time here than I did in Massachusetts. Uh, I have two daughters. One happens to be a formulation scientist at Pfizer and was involved with bringing that vaccine to, to market. Mm. Uh, she's my resource from a, a, a Pfizer perspective. Um, I, uh, my background, I was in the computer industry for uh, 30, 31 years. And um, then I was in the construction field where I was a general contractor in Merrimack. Um, then I was a truck driver for five years and drove 550,000 miles in the US mm. cross country. Um, I'm now a part-time carpenter, uh, but I'm also, a, um, I'm also sitting on, my, on the Summersworth School Board. This is my second term. Um, I'm involved with the Community Action Partners and I've spoken at NAMI conferences on uh, issues associated with the LGBT community, especially the transgender population. I am one of about 10 transgender state legislators across the country uh, and a, a leader here in New Hampshire. And that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Jeff Soloway. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, Jeff Salloway, representative from Stratford 5. That's the town of Lee, downtown metropolitan Lee, in fact. Right. Um, I am Professor Emeritus from University of New Hampshire, where I chaired the Department of Health Management and Policy and taught epidemiology. Uh, my particular research interests <coughs> were in uh, neurological diseases, particularly Alzheimer's disease and kidney diseases. And uh, I am now doing participant observation research in both of those topic areas. There's a little joke in there if you think about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm, I have found on this committee not only a, a fabulous mm. college, I use the word advisedly, of uh, expertise, but um, a group of very devoted colleagues and friends. Uh, it's a joy to be on this committee, and I thank you all for your efforts. 
By way of full disclosure, when he threatened recently not to run again, I yep. threatened him back. And look what happened. So this this is a standing order, Jeff. We, we've got you as long as we want you, <laughs> <laughs> which will be a long time. Jerry Knurk. Yeah, hi. Yeah, OK, I'm, I'm unmuted. I'm Jerry Knurk, and I'm state rep for Carroll County District 3. I live in Freedom. I cover Madison, Tamworth, Albany, and Freedom. Um, I grew up actually in Michigan, but then way back uh, many years ago, went out to Boston for medical school at Harvard and also for orthopedic residency, and then uh, became a uh, orthopedic spine surgeon and did that for many years till arthritis and my thumbs knocked me out of surgery. And so then I moved up to New Hampshire in 2007, where I ran a non-operative spinal practice. I started it and ran it and took care of people with spine problems, kind of like their primary care doc for back problems. Um, I retired in 15, ran for state rep, and I'm now on my third uh, term, beginning my third term. Um, other jobs that I do, I'm actually uh, also the chair of the New Hampshire Therapeutic Cannabis Medical Oversight Board, mm -hmm. currently serving as the vice chair of the State Health Assessment, State Health Improvement Plan Advisory Council, which is the meeting that I'm supposed to be at right now, and along with Bill. Um, and uh, but the but uh, yeah, what do you, you can't clone yourself. So anyway, um, so I do have those couple of other uh, hats that um, are there. And if those of you who are new, the longer you are here, the more you're going to get those little extra hats to wear, which is actually quite good and quite interesting. Um, it's a great committee already been alluded to we really work together very well we don't really care about partisanship we work together and try to figure out what's going to be the best solution and for outside activities my major outside loves are outside sports um like if it didn't have these meetings today i would probably be skiing um and uh swimming and biking and kayaking and, and gardening so that's that's me in a nutshell retired orthopedic uh, spine surgeon and now working as a legislator works for me and, and for us, thank you. Ken Snow, got to unmute. Unmute, Ken. Unmute, Ken. Ken, you have to unmute. We're gonna have to give him a sticker to put right next to that spot on his screen. Stickers are good. <laughs> I'm muted at this point, and it won't do it. You're good Sorry. now. We can hear you. Oh, good. I don't know why it says it, I can't. But anyway, I'm Ken Snow. I uh, live in Manchester, uh, represent Ward 12 here in Manchester, which is on the west side. I'm in my fourth term, all of which I've served on the Health, Human Services, and Elderly Affairs Committee, and thoroughly enjoy my participation in that. Career-wise, I'm a social worker, as Joe, sharing Joe Shapiro's background. Worked for over 50 years in the community mental health field, 48 of those here in New Hampshire. Mm. I was a social worker and uh, an executive at the Mental Health Center of Greater Manchester. I retired in uh, 2014 when I was a vice president of community relations and development. Uh, I have a close working relationship with the other community mental health centers and the association that represents them. I'm also involved with a number of other uh, mental health providers, including the uh, the uh, uh, state hospital and other mental health providers. Uh, and that's a keen interest of mine. Um, I think otherwise I have, I, I'm married. I married a New Hampshire girl, even though I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts. And you know, you can't take Worcester out of the boy that's once right. you grew, grew up. But anyway, I think I've overcome a lot of those handicaps over the years. And I consider myself <laughs> Granite State, or even though the rest of New Hampshire will never consider me anything but a carpetbagger. Uh, but um, it, I, I'm very interested in a number of topics uh, uh, related to mental health and work very closely with that. But I also just in healthcare in general, I it's, it's, it's decided area of interest. Uh, we do have a subdivision of health and human services that looks at mental health uh, substance abuse and suicide, and uh, mm -hmm. I hope I hope to be involved in that subdivision of the committee this year. I should also say that a fellow committee member, Jim McKay, and I started a, a group called the uh, Bipartisan Mental Health Caucus. The purpose was to move ahead the 10-year mental health plan that was mm -hmm. put forward in 2008 in the hope that we could educate 
uh, legislators and other community leaders to make sure that plan moves ahead. The last 10 year plan we had never really did move ahead. So we want to keep some attention on that plan and get people's motivation to move it along. But we've been running some in-service <clears throat> programs prior to COVID uh, that were well attended by members of the legislature from both parties. And we hope to resume that once we're uh, past all this isolation that we're involved in right now. And mm -hmm. Other than that, I'm really looking forward to my fourth term in the committee. Thank you so much, Ken. Lucy Weber, Chair Emerita. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm Lucy Weber. I live in Walpole um, and I represent Walpole, Westmoreland, Chesterfield and Hinsdale, so the lower left-hand corner of the state. Um, I started out, I was, uh, grew up in New York City, which I hated uh, because it was urban. Uh, we had a summer camp in Northern New Jersey that was very rudimentary and which I loved a lot more. So uh, when I had control over where I lived, I, I, my residence was New Jersey rather than New York. And from there I came to Vermont and from there I crossed the river. I was just, just on the other side of the river in Brattleboro and then before that in the upper valley. So I've lived my adult life up and down both sides of the Connecticut River basically. And it's very interesting to see how much the Connecticut River Valley is not a part of either New Hampshire or Vermont mm. and is equally neglected by both of the states <laughs> that towns there belong to. Um, I started out as a teacher. I went to law school. My practice wound up being in elder law. Uh, so the problems of an aging mm. population mm. are something that I really am fascinated by. So I am... Uh, the committee's token attorney, but I'm good at drafting stuff and I'm glad to help everybody with wordsmithing, whether I agree with the sentiment or not. And um, um, I have served on judiciary, EDNA, children and family law, legislative administration, but this really feels like my home. I've spent two and a half terms here, eight terms in the house entirely. Uh, but this really does feel like my home. And um, I think that's it. I will say that um, I, I was very sad when our vice chair from last time, Polly Campion, decided not to run again um, because she not only was very able, uh, she brought the perspective of a nurse. So I'm glad we have another nurse mm -hmm. uh, who is going to continue that point of view. And uh, I guess in terms of family, I have uh, no children, but I have an enormous extended family, both because my sister used up my allocation of children. And so I've got lots of nieces and nephews and because my late husband came with a very large family before I met him. Um, I will also add that I looked after my husband in his last illness, which was prostate cancer, and he was mm -hmm. quite ill for four years. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I bring the perspective of a caregiver mm -hmm. of a sick relative. And I know that the other thing that all of us bring are, are our own life experiences with our own family members and the care that we need to give both to them and to our communities. And uh, it's why this is such a rich, a, a committee that is so rich in experience of all kinds and, and they're all uh, both listened to and valued and it's why I like serving here. So thank you all. Thank you so much. Bill King, a brief bio of yourself. After you've unmuted. Representative King, please unmute. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, good morning uh, and thank you, Mr. Chairman for um, allowing me to introduce myself and uh, give you a little background. I'm uh, Bill King and I'm from uh, Milford, uh, which is Hillsborough District 23 for those um, mm -hmm. keeping track of that. Mm -hmm. um, 
I am a transplant from New York, but I'm from the upstate Adirondack area of uh, New York, which uh, is very, very similar to the New England area. So um, uh, when I moved to New Hampshire in 93, it was a very easy transition. Um, so um, I spent, after high school, I spent four years in the Navy, and which uh, helped pay for my college education. I became an engineer and um, I've worked in manufacturing for over 30 years. And um, I'm, I'm not very well uh, suited for corporate. So um, when the chance came, I semi-retired and now I'm in legislation. So um, uh, I've, uh, I've got four kids, which you can see in the picture. By the way, I, for whatever reason, uh, I don't know if it's a firewall here where I am, uh, but I can't actually turn my camera on. But um, the picture is uh, of my four kids and I've got three boys and a daughter, um, all basically of um, legal age. And um, that's left me to dabble in uh, in, in different things. We did lose my wife uh, four years ago to sarcoma. Mm. And um, this picture actually was taken right after she had passed. And uh, we did uh, a therapy vacation in California. At any rate, um, uh, in the recent years, um, uh, substance misuse has been something that I've been um, involved in. Um, uh, through New Hampshire Alliance, uh, I'm also uh, connected with uh, Good Samaritan Network, which has done a lot with uh, nice. um, substance misuse. Mm -hmm. And um, my office in Milford is right next to Addiction Recovery Coalition of New Hampshire. And uh, so I'm closely tied to uh, addiction recovery. And um, within my church, I've got several people that uh, suffer from mental illness. So I'm, I'm definitely uh, looking forward to working with this committee in those areas. Um, I guess that's about it. Um, I am, this was my first year, so I'm a freshman and um, drinking from the fire hydrant right now. Thank you. And I'm Mark Pearson and I am your chairman I grew up in Lemonster, Massachusetts, which could be called, but we refused to, Metropolitan Worcester. <laughs> and, uh, um, I went to Williams College for my undergraduate degree in history. And then Oxford came calling with a bag of money and who was I to turn them down? So I did um, the mass my master's degree in Oxford and later my doctorate at Boston University. Representative Soloway, yeah. Um, I was ordained in the Episcopal Church in 1974. I pastor a church part-time in Kingston. My wife is a family practice physician, and together we started a faith-based nonprofit center of wellness, which brings together uh, family practice medicine. We have three providers counseling, massage therapy, and prayer and sacramental ministry of healing. I'm part-time CEO primarily in the area of long-range visioning and in fundraising. I came into this committee with Representative Marsh and Salloway and Kinnerick in that great class of 2016 and loved it and loved it the last two years and I'm loving it now. Uh, Mary Ellen McKay, who was in our committee and I nicknamed us the cool kids because most of us in high school weren't. We were band geeks or we were lab rats. And now in our dotage, we are truly the cool kids. I have three adult children. One is a corrections official in a maximum security prison. The other uh, was a public school teacher and is now homeschooling. And the third one, the eldest, is a Stephen, a fire lieutenant in Manchester studying for the captain's test. And he serves in the House of Representatives in the EDA um, committee. Um, I have three grandchildren, each one of which is my favorite. I lost my basset hound two years ago, and I'm trying to figure out how it can work with everything I do to get another one. And so far, it's not happening. 
So I'm glad to be here. This is truly the best committee. I owe an immense amount of debt to Representative Kotowski, to use his Polish pronunciation, and especially to Representative Weber for modeling in two different styles what committee chairs should be like and indeed can be like. So thank you, and I look forward to working alongside both Representative Marsh as my vice chair and Representative Weber as the ranking member of what our British friends call the party opposite. So that's us, and a couple of us, or several of us have to scoot, and we will be convening at 10 o'clock on Tuesday. The link for this meeting comes from DHHS, and it's the meet and greet of all those cool people that we have been seeing a lot of on television. And it was fun. It, my wife got sick of me saying, oh, I know that person when so-and-so was on TV because they always come to our committee because we're the Health and Human Services Committee and they're the department. So with that, I'll say goodbye to everybody. And Jerry, do you have a, is that hand just, to say goodbye or what? No, just a real quickie. On my screen, on the tile view, I am sitting immediately next to you, so I can give you the elbow. For those who are new, Mark sat next to me, and we always elbowed each yeah. other. Mostly he elbowed me. Thank you. Well, all right, then I want to Man's tell one concern of the former chair who has a very good um, ability with the hairy eyeball because I used to teach second grade too. <laughs> Which is often why I took my glasses off. But I do want to say one story about Representative <laughs> Knirk and I. There was an issue and I forget what it was, but you wound up arguing to the right. It was, the con it was to prohibit conversion therapy and we've, we argued opposite sides. We opposite argued we argued opposite to our party ideology because somebody needed to bring up the other side and it just seemed to be fair. So this kind of thing, I'm not sure how many committees this could happen in, but it will happen in yeah. ours. And yeah. Kotowski couldn't take our elbowing any longer, which is why he made me clerk one year is to separate us. Yeah. Actually, just a real quick thing, and the conversion therapy, the other story I like, and this is for this whole committee to understand, Mark and I argued, because I, I, I was with my side on that one, and so Mark was with his side, but we argued at the well, we saw each other at lunch and gave each other a hug. That's the point. We can disagree, and we can still love each other, and that's what we got to do. More stories for later, folks, but... But can I have one last question? Okay, Ken, because it's you. One last question. For next Tuesday, the 19th, I do have that 10 a.m. meeting you just spoke about. But I also had a notice that we had a 9 a.m. Uh, Zoom meeting on Tuesday. Is that not correct? Who has one? Health, Human Services, and Elderly Affairs. That this committee had a meeting followed by mm. the Get Acquainted meeting with the Health and Human Services people. No, that's, that's, that's today. this meeting. Okay, so. Okay. No, no I mean, the, the 10 a.m. is the one where the people from right. the Department of Health and Human Services introduced themselves. Is that not correct? Yes, but this committee committee has no nine o'clock meeting on okay, Tuesday. That's Just fine the ten. So I'm giving you an hour off. Okay, one additional I have no question. Sorry. I have one, one more scheduling question. Are are we usually going to meet at on Fridays? We have no idea who is we. Of uh, uh, this committee. <laughs> yes, sir. Our, this we committee. don't know yet. It depends on how the room allocation is. I have things I have to do and I can't make appointments until I know, but we are told we should be told very soon and I'm pushing them on that. And in the meeting I'm about to go to, I'll push them again. And if in that meeting I find out, I will get right back to you because you have meetings to set up to. I do, and, and Friday's a great day and so is Monday, just saying. Well, okay. Okay. Gotta go now. Go One ahead. additional Bye. question. One more question. Oh, Joe, because it's you. Um, we're all special, huh? We um, you are. I love you all equally. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to schedule another meeting, and I'm wondering if we have any indication of how long the January 19th meeting will go. Not afternoon. They're going okay. to troop everybody before us because they don't have to go outdoors. They can do it on Zoom. So we're going to meet everybody, including custodial, uh, on next Tuesday. So, But I told them at noon they would be turned into pumpkins. So not past noon. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Hey, I just sent Bye. the email. I just sent the email about the SAM meeting, about the uh, substance abuse. 
seminar. Bye, everybody. It was nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Thank you. you.